Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Robin, and thank you so much for the invitation to, to join all of you today. Yeah, I'm Matt Britton. I run Google in Africa, the Middle East, uh, and Europe. And it's great to be here amongst people who believe in the potential of technology to drive positive change for everyone. It's also great to be here on a day when that news of innovation takes us an important step closer to light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it's impossible not to acknowledge the situation we're all facing, a really difficult time when we're all at sea in this storm of the pandemic, suffering potentially in family, uncertainty, depletion, concerned about the future. We also face this serious economic impact of COVID that's still really to come. Um, but I think just as this impressive academic and commercial collaboration is giving us hope of vaccines, it's also up to all of us, government, businesses, communities, to work together and to play our part in an economic renewal and an economic recovery. So I'm hoping to offer some optimism by looking at the big picture. I'm gonna illustrate my story today with bread making, with leather bags, with punch card software, and with the world's oldest board game. Now, one thing I learned from the founders of Google, as you said, I joined the company in 2007, I learned the value of looking to the long-term trends. For example, in 1998, they could see the potential of everyone on the planet being able to access the world's information. That was at a time when fewer than 4% of people were online. And here in the UK, I believe we have an absolutely enormous opportunity. We are amongst the world leaders in e-commerce. We've got some of the world's best content industries and we are producing just incredible computer scientists. And this is obviously a critical moment for the UK. There's never been a more important time for technology to help with a digitally accelerated, sustainable, economic recovery that works for everyone. And 22 years on from the founding of Google, now over half the planet is online today, and the other half are gonna join us all pretty fast. UK content creators, UK developers, UK businesses can, and indeed they must build for everyone. Just as Tim Berners-Lee uh, encouraged us to do right at the start, Tim Berners-Lee, you're here from tomorrow. Um, now, I graduated from university uh, in 1989, and that was the year Sir Tim wrote the memo envisaging the World Wide Web. Yeah, I spent more than uh, most of the last 20 years working in jobs that depended pretty critically on that invention. So how do you arm people to work in a world that's not been invented yet? How do you ensure that we've got the right skills, the right tools and the right rules so that everyone can thrive in this world of innovation? UK has long been a pioneer in technology and innovation, not just Sir Tim, but an array of talent that represents the diverse and modern country we live in. And I've been lucky enough in this job over the years to get to know some of these talents. One you may have heard of is Dame Stephanie Shirley, a real pioneer. She came to the UK in 1939, an unaccompanied child, a refugee from Nazi Germany. But by 1962, she had started her own business, selling software on punch cards. The business was staffed entirely by women. Now, selling freelance software before the software industry had really been invented, that's pretty uh, innovative, that's pretty entrepreneurial. And she had to overcome enormous barriers. One example being, she found that if she signed with her actual name, people didn't respond to her letters. She had to start signing herself as Steve Shirley so that people would accept her meetings. Becoming a pioneer in computing and a real trailblazer for entrepreneurial women in business, I can highly recommend her book, Let It Go, and she has a new one um, which covers many of her speeches. Uh, it's, it's really worth reading if you don't know her story. A more current example, you mentioned DeepMind. Well, the founder, Demis Hassabis, was born in London to a Greek Cypriot father and a Chinese Singaporean mother. He was a child chess prodigy and he went on to gain degrees in computer science and then cognitive neuroscience. And then he founded his own video games company, and in 2010, he founded DeepMind to advance artificial intelligence. They had some early breakthroughs um, with playing the world's oldest board game, Go, uh, which has more potential moves than atoms in the universe. If you want to know more on that story, then the movie AlphaGo is available free on YouTube, shows you uh, the story of playing that game. Uh, this is nearly 50 years after Steve Shirley. So a career highlight for me was being able to introduce the two of them and then leave them chatting and sharing their stories across two, de uh, two examples across decades of this kind of talent inventing the future for the UK. It demonstrates why this country has got so much potential and the need for us to do more. 
So you might be thinking, well, look, this technology is old hat. I've had the entire web you know, in my pocket for the last 10 years, thanks to smartphones. But actually, it's still early morning on the web. It's still early morning on the web. Only half the planet is here. And in the UK, we need to know that. We need to get up and put our running shoes on and get out there. Now, let me take this big picture back down to where we are today. It's pretty clear through the lockdown how online tools have been a real lifeline. My parents are in their late 80s and they're doing video calls, they're doing all their shopping online. All of us have become used to new, new technologies for online working. This kind of conference is the only way we can meet and share ideas these days. All of this has become mainstream and a real lifeline. In fact, if you look globally, the consumer and business use of technology has leapt forward at least five years in as few as five months a 60% increase in internet usage overall. Uh, we see our searches going through the roof on things like online shopping grew by 200% worldwide. Video meetings we're all used to. Events have become huge. Google Meet, our solution for this kind of thing, is uh, has grown its peak daily usage by over 30 times in that period. But not everyone has access to these vital tools or indeed the skills that you need to use them. And even before the crisis, it was clear that the jobs of the future were going to need a new set of digital skills. And all COVID-19 has done in this context has accelerated the speed of that transition. So now it's even more urgent to invest in people and businesses to make sure that we have an economic recoverable that's sustainable and inclusive, that's not just for the privileged. Because, you know, technology must help everyone. It's got to overcome barriers caused by inequities, such as where you live, your race, financial resources, access to education. Digital skills and digital tools are going to be a catalyst for the comeback. With new technologies, investing in the right infrastructure and tools, empowering partners, nonprofits, and people with the right skills, the UK can create a digitally accelerated, sustainable, and inclusive recovery. So in that context, what's Google doing? How are we thinking about this? Well, I think there are four things that we see as being uh, really important. Firstly, skills. So we've been investing in training to help as many people in the UK as possible get ready for the jobs of the future. And then tools, providing apps and platforms that help local businesses digitize and to recover faster. Rules, working with governments as they update the rules of the road that build policies that can enable growth and programs that can enable a resilient and equitable workforce. And fourth, sustainability. We have to ensure the economic recovery is also green and sustainable for everyone. In fact, that will make it even more productive and successful as a recovery. So I want to talk about those four things in turn. Let me start with skills and how we can uh, support um, that transition for a more inclusive future. We've got some experience here. Since 2016, Google has visited more than 500 locations across the UK and provided digital skills training to more than half a million people. We've been blown away by demand. On average, we found that 50% of the people coming to us on digital skills training are women. Um, many are going through career tra transitions in the later stages of their lives as well. So we had a whole array of activities, um, in many cases, shops on high streets, online courses. We had buses running around the Scottish Highlands. In fact, before Scotland, uh, before lockdown, I was in Scotland uh, at our digital garage, a store in Edinburgh, just um, spent the day listening to people, watching people, gaining confidence by uh, digital skills training in person and realizing that it's not some kind of a mystery or something to be scared of, but it's something with which they can build a new career, start a business, grow a business. And in fact, around the world, about a third of the people who've been through digital skills training that we've been able to track have gone on to get a better job, to start a business or to grow in their careers. It's this empowering. It's just not training people to be software developers, it's the basics of online marketing, how to get a website working and so on. So whether it's buses touring the Highlands or visiting the gaming hub in Dundee, you know, our team's actually been out across the UK, particularly outside London, where the need has been greatest for all of this work. So we've also pledged that before the end of 2021, we'll provide free digital training to a further 100,000 people up and down the country. So that's thinking about digital skills. Now, digital tools. We recently also committed that by the end of 2021, we're going to try to help a million small businesses in Britain to stay open, helping them to be found online. And as well as the training, the tools are an important part of enabling that. This is not about tech companies. 
today every business is digital because every customer, you know, she's got the internet in her hands. Small and medium sized businesses, three fifths of the UK's employment and around a half of all private sector turnover in this country. So there's no doubting the magnitude of their importance in the UK and they deserve the best tools, not just the biggest companies. So many of them, as you know, have had to adapt quickly so that they can operate online. Many of them have physical premises that they have been reopening at less than capacity. And online needs to be a key part of their recovery, whether it's providing information about how they're adapting to being uh, open or offering e-commerce for the first time. A couple of examples there. I said I'd mentioned bread, so baking. And John uh, Mensa is the founder of Uncle John's Bakery in Tottenham. It was based on his Ghanaian Rat Nana's recipes uh, for sweetbreads. And uh, it's a 20 year old business, but of, like many during lockdown, he had to close the bakery temporarily. But by updating Google My Business, his listing, people could see on search and on maps that he was now selling online and he's been able to add some volume and existing customers have loved it as well as opening up to new customers as a result. And many businesses have been having to adapt and pivot fast in the same way. He's one of hundreds of thousands of every, everyday entrepreneurs that have leapt into digital and found it an additional channel uh, to communicate and to grow business. Or there's uh, Julie Dean, who founded the Cambridge Satchel Company in 2008 with 600 pounds sitting at her kitchen table. She is a real genius for marketing and engineering. And with some digital tools from Google and some others, she was rapidly able to build a global brand, becoming a micro multinational. And this is one of the things that digital allows. It allows anyone with an idea and a smartphone to immediately think about global reach and scale in a way that was never possible before. And uh, you may have seen her leather satchels. This is one she gave me uh, to say thanks for our help in uh, assisting their growth. And it's small things, small tools can make a big difference. We recently did some research with YouGov here in the UK, and it showed us that over half of small business owners see a positive in business impact when consumers leave online reviews. It's incredible to see how a small gesture that we can all make as consumers can have such an impact on traditionally offline businesses, local businesses, that are more important than ever and are likely to be so for many years to come. So that's digital skills and thinking about the tools and technology we need. Thirdly, I want to talk about rules. It's the time for all of us to ask technology to do more, not less. More for communities, more for companies, more for the economy. And bold initiatives are needed so that we can recover and get the economy accelerating. And here I believe that partnership is the way forward. You've got to understand the technology and you've got to work between government, businesses, communities. That's why we're working closely with governments and local partners from the Department of Work and Pensions to the Federation of Small Business to help to build on the rapid acceleration of technology that we've seen during the crisis. Uh, initially, during the pandemic, as the Health Secretary has mentioned, you know, we were focused on our core mission of information, pivoting so that you've got information from the NHS in search on Google News, on YouTube, on information panels. And then supporting health and policy decision makers. You may have seen we provided um, mobility data, which is aggregated Google Maps data that helped provide an insight into how people were moving or not moving as different types of lockdown measures uh, were put in place. And we're seeing those tools being more useful uh, now as we're looking at regional measures in lots of countries around the world. And then on technology, just as vaccine research has seen pharma rivals come together, we created the underlying technology and partnership with Apple uh, to support contact tracing apps that others could build on top of them, built by the health services here and elsewhere, now live in many countries and in the UK as part of a solution to contact tracing. And then collaboration and communication. Groundbreaking technology harnessed by local innovators is what allows us to tackle really big challenges, but also the issues that we face every day, remote schooling, teach from home and work from home and so on. And it's the right environment that's so crucial to this kind of partnership approach Governments have got a really important role to play in ensuring that all sectors can harness the promise of technology when we try to build for the future. So as the UK works now against the clock to define the path we'll take as we depart fully from the EU, we're going to need an ecosystem which builds and ensures responsible technology, but also enables innovation and growth to ensure that the UK can be a digital global leader and can accelerate business digitization and can empower our citizens. The government has set aspirations like these and we agree that can deliver tremendous potential. For example, bringing specialized technology like cloud computing to our universities 
and to our small businesses by prioritizing investment in digital skills training. We're ready to play our part uh, to ensure that digital can help the UK reach its full potential in this new chapter. So I've talked about skills and tools and rules. Now a word on sustainability, it's something that's important to me and it's been a core value for us since Google was founded two decades ago. Uh, as Robin, you mentioned in your introduction, I joined Google in 2007 and that was actually the year that we as a company became carbon neutral. 10 years later in 2017, we became the largest corporate buyer of renewable energy in the world and we operate the cleanest cloud in the industry. And we recently announced that we've neutralized our entire carbon legacy since our founding, as well as announcing our most ambitious sustainability goal yet into the future. We aim to operate on 24 seven carbon free, carbon free energy in all our data centers and campuses worldwide by 2030. We've got a lot of innovation to do to get there. But all of that means that today, every email you send through Gmail, every question you ask through Google search, every YouTube video you watch, every time you use Google Cloud tools, it's already carbon neutral. And in the future, our services will be supplied only by carbon free energy every hour of every day. And we're committed not just to doing this ourselves, but to helping others in this transition to a carbon free world. Using machine learning, much of it developed by DeepMind in London, we've reduced by 30% the energy needed for cooling our data centers that run all those services. A reduction of 30% on top of what was already pretty efficient data centers. And we're making that cloud technology solution available for partners as well. Some other examples of using this kind of innovation to help other companies uh, on sustainability, the French retailer Carrefour. Carrefour's managed to drastically reduce food waste by using Google AI to analyze large data sets and forecast demand. The organizers of this event, The Telegraph, are using Google Cloud machine learning to better predict demand, maximize sales, minimize waste in their physical supply chain. And we've been collaborating with Stella McCartney and the WWF using data analytics and machine learning so that fashion brands have a better view of the impact of their supply chains, just at the beginning of applying this kind of technology to businesses large and small for sustainability. So let's think now about the opportunity for the UK. Well, when I think about what's going to be successful in this content and the opportunity that we have in this country, I think about where would you want to start from? You want to have world leading technical and engineering skills. Well, in the UK, we've got 850,000 plus professional developers. We've got strong academic institutions, 31 UK universities ranked in the world's top 200, including the number one and the number two. So you need to have great talent, but you also need to have amazing content to thrive in this new digital world. We've got some of the most successful films of the last decade made here from Holmes to Potter to Bond. The UK's long produced world leading musical talent from Bowie and the Beatles to Dua Lipa, Stormzy. We export great content. Amazingly, if you look at YouTube, 84% of watch time for YouTube UK based creators come from outside the UK. We're amazing exporters of all genres of content in digital form. So you want the skills, you want to be great at content. You also need to have an incredible retail and e-commerce sector from well-known brands to family run businesses like I've talked about with just a handful of staff. Every day we see British businesses, large and small, using technology to drive growth, to expand their reach, to export and create jobs and prosperity. And finally, you need to have a vibrant startup sector, one that's grasping technology and moving forward. We've got thriving tech hubs, not just in London, but growing now in other cities such as Manchester or Reading or Birmingham or Bristol or Bath or Dundee, as I mentioned earlier. And the UK is third in the world for tech investment behind only the US and China. Over 10 billion was invested in UK tech in 2019. So I really do believe that we have everything we need for that digitally accelerated, sustainable and inclusive recovery and economic renewal so that we can build our future together. And now's the time for us to work together as a tech community in new ways, with new forms of partnership, drawing on the best of our ecosystem for the whole of the UK and inspired by the challenge of this crisis in uh, ways of working and innovating at pace and at scale. So I hope you can tell I remain fundamentally optimistic about the future despite what lies in front of us. I really believe that online tools and digital skills will be a catalyst for the comeback for the UK in the years ahead. And I don't know that it's working together in partnership that will enable us as a tech community to drive forward a positive change 
that works for everyone. Thank you.